Well, an, an, an eclipse of two objects, uh, in this case the, the sun and the moon, uh, occurs when one passes in front of the other. Um, in, in this case, it's a, it's, an, it's a solar eclipse, which means that the moon passes in front of the sun, between the earth and the sun. In, in the case of a lunar eclipse, it's that the earth passes in, in between the uh, sun and the moon and darkens the moon. But this happens during the daytime, it's a solar eclipse. And uh, the moon, it, it, it's sort of a, an intriguing situation because the moon is one four hundredth the diameter of the sun, but it's also one four hundredth of the distance. So we are in a very fortunate situation where the, both the sun and the moon have the same apparent diameter. Now this was not always the case uh, in uh, millennia past, I mean millions of years ago past, uh, the moon was closer to the earth than it is now and it appeared uh, significantly bigger in the sky than, than it does now. Um, and uh, so an eclipse of the sun back then, uh, this was before people were around, would have lasted a whole lot longer because the moon was bigger than the sun and it would have taken more time to pass in front of the sun. Now, millions of years into the future, the moon is actually moving away from the earth in its orbit slowly, a few inches per year. So it's going to take a long time. But in millions of years from now, uh, there will be no longer be total eclipses of the sun because the moon will appear smaller in the sky than the sun does and it will never uh, totally cover it. So we live in a period right now that's especially fortunate that we have total eclipses of the sun and um, the moon exactly covers the sun uh, very neatly and uh, gives us this spectacular view of the sun's atmosphere, the corona, that we never see any other time because of the brightness of the sun. When the sun's surface is completely blocked out by the moon, then we get to see the uh, the, the huge uh, atmosphere of the sun that we normally are, are blinded to uh, looking at it through solar glasses or anything else. So it's the only time that we ever get to see this view of the, the solar corona. And uh, so that is a total solar eclipse. Now there's, there's partial eclipses that, uh, that occur uh, much more often than total eclipses. Uh, these are where the moon partially obscures the sun, doesn't obscure the whole thing. It might only be a little corner or maybe even half of it. And uh, unless you really know that it's going to be happening, you may not even be able to tell the difference in the amount of light uh, coming from the sun. But uh, the total, uh, total solar eclipse, there is no missing it. I mean, the sun totally is blocked out for the small path of the shadow and the people that lie in that path path is only about 65 miles wide and this time around in August of this year uh, Sumter lies right in that path. Okay I, I saw one when I was a, a kid back in uh, March of 1970 that passed over Sumter. We, we're in a really um, uh, special position here in Sumter believe it or not because we've had uh, or will have had two total solar eclipses in less than 50 years. Uh, most places on the surface of the Earth only experience a, a total solar eclipse every 400 years or so on average. But we had one back in March of 1970 that the path, sort of the shadow path, came up 95, came from the south, went towards the northeast, up by 95, and Sumter was in the shadow. Columbia was not. Columbia did not experience that total solar eclipse like we did. But back then, it was a Saturday, it was in March of 1970, and it's very similar to what we're going to see this year. Uh, what will happen is at about 1.43, uh, at least here in Sumter, of course the times vary depending on where you are, but in Sumter, at about 1, uh, excuse me, at about one, one about, about a quarter after 1 on the 21st of August, the, moon's, the moon will uh, partially start uh, eclipsing the sun. And over the next... Uh, 
couple of hours, what will happen is the temperature will slightly drop. You'll see a little bit of a temperature drop. You might even see the winds pick up a little bit because the temperature is changing here locally. Uh, you'll gradually see the sky start, start to darken. Hopefully we won't be covered in clouds. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll be able to see all this. But as it gets close to totality, and totality here in Sumter occurs at uh, 2.43 p.m. Um, when it gets close to totality, the last couple of minutes, uh, the light dims very, very quickly. And it'll dim down to the point where about, what well, it'll be about as dark as it is, uh, say after, maybe 20 minutes after a sunset. Not completely dark like it would be at night, but very dark. Uh, compared to what you would think and um, you'll hear if, if you're out in the country you might hear uh, the crickets starting to chirp you'll hear uh, birds will get quiet you might hear dogs start to bark because animals sense that something is different something is wrong here it's not supposed to be dark in the middle of the day um, and uh, if you look to the west since this eclipse is coming from the west the shadow is coming from the west if there's some haze in the air, and of course in Sumter here where we have plenty of humidity, so you'll probably get to see this, you'll see a shadow cone coming across towards you, uh, which is the shadow of the moon. And it travels at about 1,500 miles per hour across the United States. And uh, it'll be coming from the west, and that, that shadow will en envelop us here in Sumter for about uh, a minute and 37 seconds will be in totality and, uh, and the, moon, uh, the, the moon will be completely in front of the sun. The sun will be blocked out. You'll be able to see the corona of the, uh, of the sun. The last few seconds before totality, you'll get to see something called the diamond ring effect where you'll see a ring of light around the, the sun and you'll see the one last little piece of the sun's surface that's not covered yet, and it'll look like a diamond ring. Um, and then even a few seconds later after that, just before totality, you, you'll see these little spots of light along the edge of the sun just as it comes into totality. Those are called Bailey's beads. And what that is is sunlight that's filtering through the mountains of the moon, and it happens just for a few seconds. So if you're uh, if you're looking for it, be looking at that particular time because it happens very fast. Then we'll be in about a minute and 37 seconds of totality, and then all of this happens in reverse. You'll see the sky start to lighten a little bit. You'll see that shadow cone move away towards the east, and then I uh, think the sun will uh, start to come back out again, and things will warm up and the day will progress on like normal. But it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic, uh, event that is totally out of the norm and is pretty much a once in a lifetime event for most people. Um, some people ask, well, if we miss this one, when is the next eclipse going to come through Sumter? And as it turns out, these things are very easy to predict. The, the, the solar system uh, works like clockwork and we know the, the uh, factors that go into the timing of these things down to the millisecond actually and uh, we know that in Sumter here we'll experience another total solar eclipse on May the 11th of 2078 so that's about 60 years from now so be sure to put that on your calendar <laughs> maybe some of the young folks might be able to see a second one here in Sumter for most of us this will be the last one interesting fact is that in Colombia, some, I was over doing a talk in Colombia the other night and somebody asked when was the last total solar eclipse to come across Colombia and there, people were guessing maybe 50 years ago, maybe 100 years ago, turns out it was in 1778, only two years after the Declaration of Independence was signed, was the last total solar eclipse that came through. Columbia. So these don't happen very often. So make sure you get this on your calendar. Uh, obviously the sun is extremely bright and you don't want to take any chances at all with your eyesight because if, if just like any other time if you look into the sun you can blind yourself. Um, so do not look 
at the sun directly with your eyes as we're coming towards the period of totality or after the period of totality. Be sure to use the, the little solar glasses that are going to be available. Uh, another neat way to look at, look at, uh, at it is through a, what's called a pinhole camera uh, where you just poke a little pinhole in a piece of cardboard or a piece of aluminum foil and project an image onto something else. You can see the, the partial eclipse as it progresses. Uh, nature does sort of the same thing with the, the uh, spaces between the leaves and trees. If you get underneath a tree and look at the, all the little images that would be projected on the ground, you'll see the crescent sun uh, in each of those images. Now when, to when totality is reached, when, when, the total, when the sun is completely blocked, you can take off the glasses, take off any eye protection, and look at that just with your eyes. And that's, that's what I would encourage you to do. That's not any brighter than the full moon, so it's not going to hurt you. But as soon as, that, uh, as soon as the moon starts moving off of the surface of the sun and that first period of brightness comes back on, put the glasses back on so that you can watch from then on. But, uh, but during totality, you can look at it with your eyes. If it's not in totality, do not look at it with your eyes.